Welcome back to Learning New Testament Greek, and today we're going to continue our discussion on verbs, except now we aren't going to be talking about the general overview, we're going to be talking specifics, and we're actually going to learn us some Greek today. We're going to start off by learning present, active, indicative verbs. Alright, first of all, we're going to take the present tense. We're going to learn what the present tense does. So let's see, present tense. The present tense, recall, tenses in Greek have two elements, the time of action and the type of action. Present tense, can you guess what time it takes place? That's right, it takes place in the present uh, in relation to the speaker. So if I say something is in the present, it's in the present relation to me. Okay, well, we'll get there. And the type of action is continuous or progressive. Remember those terms? It's presented as though something is in, is in action. Um, I am going to the store. I am teaching Greek. You are learning Greek. It's something that's going on right now. That's what the present tense, or the present active indicative verbs, that's what they uh, represent, something that's in action right now. Well, that's not true 100% of the time, but that's the basic concept. All right, remember what an active verb is. What's the voice, active voice? What's that mean? That means the subject is acting. The subject is the one doing the action. So, I am going. I go. You are learning. You're, you, are, you are the one that's doing the learning. An indicative, all that means is that it's presented as true. It's presented as fact. That I really am learning, and you really are going to the store. Or whatever my examples were. All right, so let's dive in, and we're going to start off with a with a Greek word. The word we're going to start off with is the word Lego. Lego. Lego means I say. I say. Lego, I say. Now, there's something real neat about Greek verbs is that's a whole sentence, because if you don't have an expressed uh, subject, the the verb has a built-in subject for you. So, I say. So, this is a first-person singular. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's draw this out so we can see it a little easier. All right. Recall the uh, verbs have person. What are our three persons? So, you have a first person, a second person, and a third person. And then they also have number. What are, what are our numbers for verbs? 7 and 93. No, 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 no. It's singular and plural. And Lego will change its form for each one of these uh, categories in our little chart here. So, the present active and dictive First person singular is Lego. Lego. And the second person is Legace. Then Lege. In the plural, it's Legomen. Legete and Legusi. Or potentially Legusin. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Alright, so these are the different forms of the word Lego. Now, a chart like this is we call it a paradigm. Now, I know it looks like it's spelled paradigm, but it really is a paradigm. Paradigm. Uh, paradigm. Paradigm. Now, paradigm's a it's a fancy word for for a grammar chart, more or less. It's not all the word contains. Go find you a dictionary and look it up. But in our context, this is a paradigm of the word Lego in the present active indicative. So when I tell you to check a paradigm, what I'm telling you to do is Find a chart with the word. 
Now, I'm going to accent these, because I remember where these accents go. You don't have to worry about that yourself right off. All right, so let's dive in. So, we know Lego means I say. I say. Or I am saying, because I'm in the act of saying. So, I say or I am saying. So, that's a singular first person. Singular second person. Who's second person? You're a second person. So, how would we translate this? Legais. Legais would be you say, because you is second person. Legais is a second person singular. So, you say, you're the one saying. Legais, third person, is he, she, or it says. So, he, she, or it is in the act of saying. Um, I'm most likely just going to say he, partly because it's the English default and just grammatically things default to he. Uh, I don't intend to offend anyone by that. And also, I'm incredibly lazy, and he is easier to say than he, she, or it. So, he says. So, you have Lego, I say. Legais, you say. Lege, he says. Now, for the plurals, if first person singular is I, what happens if we have more than one I? We have a we. So, first person, plural, is we. So, legomen is we say. Second person plural is y'all say, is legete, y'all. Uh, you is you plural. Actually, I... My first year Greek teacher had us use ye, because ye, Y-E, is actually the plural of you. It's just fallen out of use, but we did it for clarity. So, legete is ye say, you say, y'all say, you wouldn't say, however you want to clarify that. Just know it's plural. There's more than one you. Third person plural, legusi, or legusin, is they say. Because if you have more than one he, it's a they. So, they say, Legusi, or Legusin, I'll get to that in just a moment. Alright, I bet you're saying, wow, that's, that looks awful confusing. How am I ever going to learn all these? Well, that's a good thing about the, the, uh, the Greek verbs. Most of them share the same endings. So, we're going to take the, the, the Lego off these endings, and we're going to just show you the endings. Here, I'm going to do it in a different color, so it's easier to stand out. So we're going to redo our chart over here. Hopefully I left myself enough room. So first person, second person, and third person. Singular and plural. The endings are O, S, A, Amen, Ete. Oh, I only drew half the letter there. Usi. Or usin. This this new here in the the parenthesis that's called a movable new. Movable news are optional letters at the end of a word. Um, in the case of present active indicatives, the third person plural can have a new at the end. Or it doesn't have to. The only thing it changes is the pronunciation. And in fact, authors will choose to put them in or not choose, and it's totally dependent upon the, the writer. In some cases, they might choose to put a new in. Some cases, they might not. And reasons for that vary. It could just be the mood of the author, or it could, could be because the, the next word starts with an iota, and they don't want people to get confused, or something along those lines. Uh, but just know it could have the new, or it doesn't have to. Legusi and legusin mean the same thing. Just one of them has a movable new. All right. So that's that's what I mean. I put it in parentheses to remind myself, hey, this thing doesn't have to be there. And I recommend when you learn the, your paradigm that you or your endings that you you do something similar. Now, this is what you're going to want to learn. You, you're just your endings. O, es, e, amen, 
eta usi or usin. Either one is correct. Actually, both of them are correct, not either one. And so just just learn these. Just know. Um, so when someone walks up and says, "Oh, your natural response should be say should be ace a amen eta usi." O ace a amen eta usi. O ace a amen eta usi. And once you know this, you pretty much got down present active indicative verbs, more or less. All right. Let's find us a word. What's a nut? What's a good word? Ah, I know a good word, and I'm going to choose another color just to uh, help uh, distinguish from everything we're here. Luo. Luo means to lose. Uh, for example, uh, when Jesus told his disciples to go find the donkey before the Passover. If I'm not mistaken, they luoed him, they loosed him. And then the, they were asked, well, what are you doing? They said, well, the master needs him. So they let him go. Recall that story. If I'm not mistaken, that's the word for loose there. They, they luoed the donkey. Now, it could also mean to destroy, but we'll get to that later. To loose, destroy is the, the basic meaning of, of luo. But I want to take luo, and I want to, I want to conjugate it. Now, when I conjugate luo, that is, I'm going to take it, I'm going to apply all these endings to it. That's what conjugating means. Uh, have I left myself enough space? I hope so. So we're going to go first, second, third. Uh, we're going to go singular and plural. Second, third. All right. Now, in order to uh, conjugate a, ver a verb first, we need to know its stem. Stem. The stem is the part of the word, is, well, it's the most basic part of the word. It's the part of the word you put endings onto, more or less. Uh, now, to find the stem of a verb is real easy because you take the ending off. Um, it's something called lexical form. When... All right, lexical form. A lexicon. You know what a lexicon is. Lexicon's a book of words. It's a it's a what the grammarians call the dictionary in essence. Not quite the same, but it's it's similar. Uh, so in Greek, we call the dictionaries. We call them lexicons. They're Greek lexicons. In fact, one day I'm, I'm I have to bring on a lexicon. We'll have to look at it. Uh, but if you want to look up a word, you have to look up. It's lexical form because there is an in, there is not an entry for lego, legace, lege, legomen, legete, and legusi. No, it's just lego. The present active indicative first person singular for a verb is its lexical form. It's just something to to hold on to for the moment. We'll we'll get there. Don't worry about it. But for right now, just know. That's the lexical form. This is the, the default value, if you will. This is the, the basic form. This, if you want to look up Lego in the, in the lexicon in the dictionary, you look up Lego. If you want to look up Legomen, you look up Lego. Okay, that's neither here nor there for the moment, but it sometimes will be helpful in determining the stem. But the stem is the word without the ending. Oh, here's our ending. So if we were to remove O, we'd end up with Lu. Lu. All right. So now, now that we have our stem, in order to make it a present active indicative verb, we have to add present active indicative endings. So, what is the first person singular ending? It's O. So the first person singular of Luo is Luo. Second person singular of Luo is Luis, third, because we need the stem. So Lu, and third person singular is A. Lue. Now we need a first person plural, is Lu Amen. Second person plural is. Ete is our ending, so but our stem, lu, 
then ete duete and our third person we need a stem so lu and an ending usi or lu usen i always like lu usi because it sounds sounds like it has too many u sounds in it lu usi lu usen all right and that is how you conjugate a verb luo luis lue luamen luete lu usi or lu usen so let's translate them luo Luo's first person singular. So I, I'm the one acting because it doesn't have an express subject. So we use the built-in subject with the verb, or the built-in pronoun. So I, and what does Luo mean? It means loose. So I loose, I am loosing. I'm in the act of loosing because it's a present active indicative. Luis is you are loosing. Lue, he is loosing or he looses. Luamen. We are losing. Luete, you, plural, y'all, are losing. And luusi, or luusin, is they are losing. All right, now I know that was a lot to take in. You might want to watch this one again, or and check out the book, link in the description. And next time, we're going to be going over some vocabulary words. So we get to increase our Greek. And you are rapidly becoming Greek scholars.